These are the steps that you need to know to set up Proloquotigo for the very first time and also some basic configurations to make sure that you are successful going forward. So first thing when you launch the app, it's gonna prompt you to create a user. This is where you put in your child's name. So I am gonna call this child Betty. Type in the name, hit done. Next, select your language. Most of us are using English from the United States. Hit next. Select a voice. You can scroll through and download any of the voices that are in this catalog here. For little girls, I have found the best voice is called Ella. Hello, my name is Ella. Next, on choose a vocabulary, the default is crescendo. Keep it that way. And then choosing your vocabulary level, the default is intermediate. Keep it that way. Choose your orientation. The iPad is probably already facing the way that you want it to be by default, but it doesn't matter, don't worry. So go ahead and hit next. And now you're gonna select a grid size. This is really, really important. You never wanna limit your child from the get-go by only giving them a few buttons on the screen. You are not trying to set it up with all the words they already know. You're trying to give them options to learn language as they grow. One of the recommended setups is a six by 10. I do not recommend going any smaller than a six by 10 unless your child has a visual or physical challenge that's going to prevent them from seeing or touching buttons. If they have ever played on YouTube before or any kind of tablet or device, they are probably fine with a six by 10 grid. You can even go bigger if you want to a seven by 11, which is what the app creator says is the perfect vocabulary but six by 10 is awesome for a beginner if you wanna start with that. Hit next. You don't need to select any of those, hit next. And finish, we have created a vocabulary for Betty. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a few of the options that are gonna make it easier to see and use. The first thing we're gonna do is go into this options wheel right here. I'm gonna hit back and I'm going to look for the one that says appearance right here. And there's a couple settings you wanna do here. First, scroll down to where it says skin tone. Change the skin tone so that your child relates to the icons on the screen, depending on what their skin tone might be. And then one of the most important settings you can do is go to where it says background color, right here. Change where it says fringe only to all. That way, Instead of having all of the buttons outlined with specific colors, it changes the background color of those buttons to be the specific color. This is a color code to help someone visually track what kind of button they're gonna hit next. So like our pronouns are orange, our verbs are pink, we have adjectives are blue, we have nouns are in yellow. That's a setting on every single button and it helps someone figure out more quickly what they're gonna hit next. So you always wanna make sure that that is set up. You can play with how it looks in here if you want by going into the color intensity and changing it. Most people use bleached, color code all, color intensity bleached, that is the standard. You can play around with these settings, but for right now, those are the basics I am showing you. And here is what your default screen should look like. The next thing that you wanna do is customize the most important buttons. So that is like go into the people folder and you're gonna change where it says mom and dad to actually say like mommy or daddy or whatever it is you were referred to and change the little icon to be a picture. You want your child to see your picture. You also wanna add a button for your child that has their own name and their picture so they can say their name. How you edit buttons in Proloquo to Go is by hitting this little pencil icon right here. And then you can either click on the button you wanna edit, or you can hit the plus sign to add a new button. When you're hitting the plus sign, plus on the left is a button, plus on the right is to add a folder. For right now, I'm just gonna click on the mom button. I'm gonna go right here where it says mom, I'm gonna change it to say mommy. I've changed the label to say mommy and the word, it does it by default. And then I'm gonna hit under here, under that little square, there's a little hyperlink that says edit. And I'm gonna choose a picture. 
If this is your first time using the iPad, it might ask you to allow access to pictures, allow access to all. I'm gonna choose a picture. If you have downloaded images or airdropped images, they're all gonna show up here. I'm gonna go into a random folder. Here, I'll pick a picture and then I'm gonna zoom in. You can move that around or you could zoom in, whatever you wanna do. And now we have a mommy button. I would do the same thing for daddy, change it to daddy, put in a picture. To add your child's name, in this case, if you remember, the kid's name is Betty. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna type in B-E-T-T-Y. And look, it doesn't have a default image, so I'm just gonna select a picture. Let's just go in here and we'll just pick a picture of someone, doesn't matter who. I know this isn't a child, but we're gonna use that. And one thing I wanna point out is, you're gonna notice, remember I said nouns are in yellow? And yet Betty, which is a noun, it's a person, is in white. That's an important setting. You're gonna wanna change the word kind for any buttons that weren't figured out by default. So for example, click on this, click on Betty. On this left-hand side, these are all the button options you can play with, but the one I'm looking for says word kind. It says undefined because it didn't know what Betty was. I'm gonna go through all these selections and select proper noun person. The reason why that matters, not only for the color coding, is because how you set up those buttons defines what happens when you hold it down. For kids who are first starting out with their AAC device, they're not gonna be learning to hold down the, the buttons. But as they get older and they have more language, they're gonna to wanna to hold them down because you can do different things. This one is set up as a noun person, so it's giving me person options. This one is set up as a verb, so it's giving me verb options when I hold it down. That's really important. If you don't set up a button correctly, when you hold it down, it's not gonna do the right thing and someone's gonna lose access to their language. I cover a ton of other customizations in future videos and you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to all of those. I'm only gonna show you one other option when it comes to your beginning setup. So other than setting it up, choosing a good grid size, setting up those background colors, customizing buttons that are meaningful, like people, food, toys, things your child's gonna relate to right away. There is one other setting. If you think that your child is getting visually overwhelmed by having all these buttons on the screen, which by the way, Studies have proven that like 99% of kids are not getting overwhelmed. But if for some reason you're like, wow, my kid just can't figure it out, this is too hard, there is a setting for that. Go into the options, and then you're gonna go into where it says vocabulary. And see this one right here, progressive language? Turn that on. What progressive language allows you to do is it allows you to basically hide buttons on the grid and phase them in as your child is getting more used to their device. This is not a necessary setting. In fact, it's better to have all the buttons there so that your child can learn language as they go, they can play around on their device, they can see what words sound like and where they're at. That's all great. But if you really need it, you can turn on this progressive language and for each of those phases, it's gonna hide a bunch of buttons and it's gonna keep the basics so that you can teach your child while buttons are hidden. And then as they're catching on and doing better, you phase in more, you phase in more, you phase in more until they're all there and then you can turn it off. So again, that is an option. Instead of changing the grid size on your child, just set up progressive language if you think they are getting visually overwhelmed and that's gonna help them learn the buttons and learn where the buttons are for motor planning and muscle memory without having to ruin their grid size or take away language permanently.